Getting into the hobby of audio, you might have heard terms like warm, dark, or bright. But what do those mean in the context of a headphone? Well, let's talk about it. So what makes a headphone warm? Well, Short, that makes it warm, but that's not what I'm talking about. Warm is more of a tonal trait, as is bright and dark. It's how we describe the frequency response in subjective sound. If none of that makes sense, I'll give you some examples. Warm headphones are things like the Odyssey LCD2 or the Meze Empyrean. They have a bit more of the lower mid-range and the bass frequencies. It gives the sound a certain richness, a certain roundness. A lot of people describe a warm headphone as like being wrapped up in a blanket of sound. But as an example of that, let's play a track and then add a bit of a warm tilt to it so you can hear the difference. Now, using the magic of deductive reasoning, you can determine, well, a cold-sounding headphone would be the opposite, less sound in that lower mid-range and bass region. Sometimes people also describe that as a thin sound. But bright and dark, well, that's on the other end of the frequency spectrum. That affects the treble and the upper treble. A couple examples of headphones people consider bright are things like the HD800S or the ADX5000. Though there's some cheaper ones that do this as well, like the Grado. SR80X. A bright headphone is a headphone that has more treble. Sometimes it can be too much, but it depends on your personal preferences. Here's an example of a test track, and then we'll add a bit of a bright modification to it so you can hear the difference. And of course, the same can be said in reverse for a headphone that is dark. Some examples being the LCD4 or the AudioQuest Nighthawk, also known as the AudioQuest Where Is My Treble? I Can't Find My Treble. Again, here's an example of a test track, and then we'll make the test track dark so you can hear the difference. Now that you've heard these, it's important to note these are exaggerated examples. Some headphones might be considered slightly dark or veiled, just a little bit dark, but not be anywhere near as heavy as what you heard. A lot of people consider the Sennheiser HD650 to be a slightly veiled or slightly dark leaning headphone, but it is nowhere near as dark as something like an AudioQuest Nighthawk. But it still has pretty solid treble around 3 kHz, so it depends on what part of the region you're looking at. Sometimes people call a headphone dark bright. Well, that makes sense, right? In this case, it's often a headphone that has recesses through a lot of the treble, but still ends up having a spike somewhere, so it sounds both dark and bright at the same time. Let's give you an example of that. And you know, sometimes that can work out to a headphone's advantage, and other times it doesn't. The big thing to note is that none of these terms are specifically bad. It's not saying, oh, if this headphone has this specific feature, it's a bad headphone. But what it is, is it's a tool that can better help you understand what we're communicating to you in review. If you like a little bit more treble, well, you might like something that starts to lean bright. If you listen to old rock, you might want something that has a bit more roundness and richness to the lower mids, something a little bit warm. 
Or if you listen to music that has some pretty harsh treble in it, you might want something a little bit darker to smooth it out. And there's a bajillion other audiophile terms out there to describe sound, but these are some of the common ones. If you liked these explanations and the visual aid that went along with them, but you want to go deeper down the rabbit hole, I would highly recommend checking out a video, link in the video description, about how to read frequency response graphs. It goes farther down this exact same subject, and you can kind of more understand how this translates into what you were visually seeing in a frequency response graph. This is something that can actually help you a fair bit when trying to determine whether or not you want to purchase a headphone, though I always recommend still listening to something and not entirely relying upon the graph because all of our ears are different. Regardless, it is still a very helpful tool and I would recommend that being the next place to go in your audiophile educational journey. So that is gonna wrap up this quick explanation. If you want to know more, if there's another term that you would like me to explain explain on here or some sort of weird audiophile jargon that I use all the time that just doesn't make sense, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to make another explainer and run you guys through the details. Other than that, if you like this video, please leave a like down below. Comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can either at our forum or the Discord, both linked in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace.